Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use some different time function in Excel, more specifically a hours function, a minutes function, and a seconds function. So basically what these function does is based on some time, here we have a 10, 0, 1, 32 seconds, the 10th, 10th hour, the first minute, and 32 seconds, we can take out the hour, minute, and second here. So how to take out the hour is basically with the hour function. So I can just type equal hour, I can just go ahead and tab that to complete it, and just reference this particular cell, press enter, and you can see it's picked out 10, so it's the 10th hour. So if I double click this, it will copy it down. So this picked out the 9th, this picked out the 8th, 7th, and this picked out the 20th hour, because this is PM. So it's thinking in military time. So if we wanted to pick out the minutes, it is actually just a minute function. So it's MIN, and this is the third function here. Let me go ahead and double click that. Same thing, all you need to do for the argument is reference that cell or reference a serial number uh, the same way it's the way the Excel sees uh, date and time is on the serial number. I can go ahead and press Control enter to stay within that cell. So I picked that up as the first minute. So if I double click that to bring it down, it's going to pick up the other minutes here, 29, 23, 29, and 14. And this is the same thing with seconds. So if I type equal second, and I'll go ahead and just double click that and just select the, the cell, the cell reference, press enter, it will pick up the seconds, double click it to bring it down. So you might think, how would this be useful? Let's cover two of the examples where this could be useful in with the hours function and the minute function. So if we go with the hour function, let's think about if we were in a call center, call center scenario, and we're looking at uh, the date and time of calls, and we want to see how many calls come in within the hour. So right here we have actually just listed the call times or when the call came in and our hour function has taken out the hour for that call. We could, what we can do is we put another table here and use another function called the count if function. So basically what we're going to do is based on the list here of the hours of the call, we're going to look and see which ones, how many of those fall into it. We're going to count how many of those fall into this first particular criteria. So to use the count if function, I'm going to type equals count, and I'm going to use count if here. And our range is basically this range. And I'm going to go ahead and press the F4 key. And what it does is it puts a dollar sign in front of the letters and numbers, and it makes it an absolute cell reference. So what happens with that is when I copy this formula down, these stay the same. If I didn't have the dollar signs in front of them, it would, it would be a relative cell re reference, and the letters and numbers, basically the numbers, this uh, 2 to 16, they might change because it's not absolute. Those are not locked in. So after I do that, I just type a comma and go into the next argument. And the next argument is the criteria. And so basically here, I'm going to add another hour function. And I'm going to just select that to complete it. It's going to have a parentheses available for me. And I'm going to pick that hour function out of here. So basically it says 9 a.m. It's going to pick the 9 out of that. Go ahead and press the close off the parentheses there and close off another parentheses there. You can see that Excel kind of highlighted that black to show that that's the end parentheses to the black one over there. Press Control Enter to say in that cell. And you'll notice that it's counted it out correctly because there's nine of these listed in nine, right? One, two, three. So there's nothing else here. So what I do is I, if I just double click to bring it down, it's going to copy it down. And you've noticed that when I mentioned before where it says that these are locked because of the cell reference, if I go into the next cell, you'll see nothing's changed. But if I go to the next cell, you can notice that these have changed. It went to the 7th, 8th, 9th, you know, E9, and then E10 here. And that's because it didn't have the dollar sign in front of it. So you notice now we can actually figure out how many calls happen between 9 and 9.59, or before 10 o'clock. And only one call happened at 10 to 10.59, which is this call here. And this only one call happened at 11 to 11.59, which is that call here. So this is one way where we can use the hour function to kind of get a count of the calls that happen within certain time ranges. So that's an example of how we can use the, the hour function. Now let's go into the minute function. And this is based on an example where maybe we're looking at some students and we have a time limit on a test and we want to figure out um, how many students finished on time. 
So we have our minute start, we have a start time and end time. So now I'm going to enter in the function here in this cell. I'm going to type minute. I'm going to tab that to complete it. And I'm going to reference this start time cell. And basically, since it's at the beginning of the time it, and it reads 9 o'clock, it's going to bring back basically 0 when you really think about it. So it does here. So if I, and this is also set for number, let me go ahead and set this back to general. So it, it picks it up as a, a number. Let me go ahead and double click that to bring it down. So really, when you think about it, everybody started at 9 o'clock, but their end times are different because uh, ho hopefully these people, these, these people would finish their quiz in 15 minutes, but you can see it varies here. So the other thing I can do is also get the minutes out of the end time. And so that would be equal minute. Let me go ahead and tab that and select that cell. Press Control Enter to stay in that cell. It picked up 24. I'll double click it to bring it down. So I picked up the minutes from each of these here. Now with the finish on time, what I can do is I can probably write it an if statement. Type if if this if it's less than or equal to 15 because we want to pe have people complete the time under 15 or less. Then you can say did they finish time on time? That's yes. And if they didn't finish on time, if the if the value is false, then we'd put no n and go ahead and press shift close parentheses, control enter to stay in that cell. And you can see that 24, of course, 24 is over 15, so that would be an N. Let me go ahead and double click this to bring it down. It would copy the formula down. So we see 18, of course, they didn't finish on time. 13, that's under 15 minutes, so they finished on time. And let's see if it picked it up, if it would pick it up if we said 15, right? Let me go ahead and type 15. And it still says yes, because 15 is, if it's that criteria, 15 and under. So this is an example where we can use the minute function. Now the seconds function, uh, since it's really kind of minute and kind of detailed, I, I haven't really thought of any example where we can use the seconds function unless we're doing kind of a relay race uh, that's maybe like a 50 yard dash or 50 meter dash and you can do the start and end times here and basically do the same thing here. Instead of minutes then you'll have seconds here. So that's, that's maybe another scenario where I can see the seconds function come into play. but. Those are the two examples that, that I can think of for the hour function and here for the minute function. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.